In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. In this second Sunday of Advent, we hear the voice in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. And it is to be also our voice in this time in which we experience desert-like existence. And so let us ask the Lord once again to strengthen our voice so that we will be able to proclaim his presence in the world by asking, first of all, for the forgiveness of our sins. You are the good shepherd who never leaves a flock intended. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are son of God and son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are our hope and our salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all of our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up Jerusalem, stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low and that the age-old depths and gorges be filled to level ground, that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forests and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory, with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy, we are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us, we are filled with joy, we are filled with joy. When the Lord back the exiles of Zion, we thought we were dreaming. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, on our tongue songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with nations themselves said what great deeds the Lord worked for them. What great deeds the Lord worked for us. Indeed we were glad. The Lord has done great things for Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you, 
because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and in every kind of perception, to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. straight his paths oh shall see the salvation of God the Lord be with you a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Eutria and Trachonitis, and Lysidius was uh, tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas. The word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low and winding roads shall be made straight, and the rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week I mentioned that with the Gospel readings and all of them coming together, there was a sense that the coming of the Savior would be a history-making event something that would change the course of history, a world-shattering event that would change the course of human destiny. And so today, we see how that begins, how it is announced. And Luke begins that announcement by telling us about all the people that are in power at that time, whether it's Julius Caesar, Pontius Pilate, Herod, all those familiar cast of characters that we know of in the gospel. And yet what's interesting is that the announcement doesn't come from the halls of the Roman government or from the tops of the towers of the synagogue, but rather the announcement comes in the quiet of the desert. A voice cries in the desert. It's somewhat anticlimactic. How is it? that the most historical event in human history would be announced where nobody can hear it in a desert-like place. And yet it is a reminder of what we see at the beginning of creation. God's voice, he speaks, let there be light at the beginning in an empty void where there was nothing. It is a reminder that God does his best work in the desert, in the void, in the emptiness, for it is by his own work that everything is created. And it is a reminder for us 
as we begin this season and maybe identify with the desert-like existence that we so often feel in our life, the aridity, the dryness of our life, that that is where God is present. And our lives are so very dry in these days. With the ongoing pandemic, with now a new, new strain of the virus infecting the world, it is a dryness as well where people still are looking for work or also those businesses looking for people to, be, to put to work and feel as though there's a dryness in the land. It might be as well the kind of dryness that we feel if someone who was a loved one was with us last Christmas and is not with us this year. Or again, the dryness that comes so often in people's lives when they do have an abundance and maybe feel so sated that everything feels dry in life. How often that's true for each one of us. But it is in that moment of dryness that we are to listen to what God is telling us, that there is more to our life than the dryness, and that he is doing his best work there. It is also an invitation for us to be the voice in the dryness of the world. Maybe the dryness of someone who's living by themselves and hasn't had a person talk to them in such a long time. We can be a voice as well of encouragement to someone who's struggling in raising their families or keeping their marriage together or even believing in God because of the difficulties that we, they face. We can be a voice as well in maybe doing an act of charity or giving in generosity to a charity in need. The simple point is, though, is that we are to be attentive to the impulse to be the voice in the world today, in the dryness that we feel, not to be afraid of the fact that because we can't do everything, we can't do something that allows God's message of salvation to be heard in a small way, just as it was when John the Baptist cried out in the desert. So be in touch this week with the dryness that you feel, the dryness in the lives of other people. And ask yourself in your prayer, if God is asking you to be that voice in the desert, that voice that proclaims salvation is close at hand, that God has not forgot us, that there is more to our life than the dryness that's there, and in that way, realize that God, once again, as we see our good voice being raised in proclaiming that salvation, that God does his best work in the void, in the desert, and never be afraid to embrace the desert that's part of our lives. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. With Christ coming, every valley is filled, every mountain brought low. Let us be confident that the Lord has no favorites and hears all those in need as we offer these petitions that we, the Church, may be true to the mission of Jesus, who has come to save what was lost and bind up the wounds of those injured, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning changes in their lives, that God may enlighten them and bring them peace in following his will, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, 
that they may be united to Christ in his suffering and in his glory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they be brought to new life and may their loved ones who miss them this Christmas season be comforted in the sure and certain hope that they will one day be united with them in the risen Lord. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, John the Baptist united himself with those who lived on the margins of life as he proclaimed salvation for all in Christ. Move each of us to value more deeply our humanity, even those moments of dryness and desert. For we know that you are present in each of those moments through Christ our Lord. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings. And since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels, archangels, and the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore Lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks. He said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with John the Baptist, the blessed apostles, the glorious martyrs, all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace, the salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my brother bishops, all the clergy, the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters, to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. We pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. We take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. 
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy to enter into my room. So only say the word of my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My dear Jesus, I believe that you are present in this most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you, unite myself wholly to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, we may, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I mentioned that there are small things that we can do to be the voice like John the Baptist was to proclaim salvation. And I can tell you that many of you have been the voice to me you have been a source of encouragement, but your notes, your cards, telling me of some of the stories of how you gather around families to celebrate the Eucharist at this time. I want to thank you for all of that, but also speak on behalf of all of our pastors who long for the day in which you can come back and celebrate the Eucharist with them. Hopefully that will come in the weeks ahead, and if you can return to Mass, please do so, and look forward especially to returning at Christmas. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.